Hi guys, this video is about uh, uh, adjusting the handbrake on uh, Calais VY series, I presume uh, VZ and uh, um, v, VX is going to be a similar story. So first thing we have to do just to, to jack the car up so it's standing on the stand, so it's secured on the stand. And obviously to prevent it from rolling, just in case I put a couple of bricks behind the, the front wheel. Uh, obviously we have to take the rear wheel off and uh, in order to proceed with the adjustments we have to take the calipers off. For that purpose we have to remove a couple of uh, bolts, you'll see them here. Right, my finger is pointing at 19 millimeter bolt on top here and 19 millimeters bolt on bottom here. I just uh, loose them a little bit. Now I'm gonna take them off and remove the caliper. Okay, I removed both uh, 19 millimeters bolts off. Uh, let them stay aside. And now carefully remove the, the caliper with the brake pads. Um, watch out for the hose, not to rip it or to break it. Once you removed it, uh, place it on top carefully to, pre to prevent any sort of damage. Oops, that was accidental. And you can leave them on top. Now we've got the uh, exposed router of, uh, of the rear brake. Uh, we have to remove it. Just juggle it a little bit. Don't forget before you try to take the router off, you have obviously put your handbrake in the bottom position and the gear is in neutral. Otherwise you'll have difficulties of removing the router. Once once uh, handbrake is uh, down, start juggling a little bit and you will be able to take the router off. So it comes off easily. We'll put it carefully on a soft surface so it's the surface of the router is not damaged. Um, this is uh, this is a rear brake pad shoe. That's, that's what actually holds your car uh, steady once it's in park position and uh, prevents from rolling. Now as you can see there are multiple pads on the shoe so obviously they have to be cleaned. I've got uh, quite a bit left on this uh, on the shoes so I don't have to replace them. As a matter of fact uh, the procedure of replacing the brake pad shoes uh, is quite rare. Right? Uh, obviously for the people who drive with the handbrake on that's, <laughs> that, that becomes compulsory. And in order to adjust uh, this uh, uh, brake pad uh, shoe, there is a cog on the bottom. Right? This is this is the cog, and you can see the little teeth of the cog. By uh, moving it up or down, that cog spreads the shoes or tighten them. Uh, basically, once 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 you start moving it down, right, uh, you um, losing lo losing losing the uh, brake pads. If you start uh, moving this cog up, it will spread it will it will it will spread the shoe and that's how your handbrake activated. The action I can show you is by just pulling the little cord behind and you will see the action on this shoe. That's I'm trying to hold it steady. I don't know if you see it but uh, there's there's a movement there once I start pulling this cord. So this is the adjustment on the rear brake pad shoe. Now to move the cork obviously you will need a flat bit screwdriver and depends on what would you like to achieve. You have to tighten them or loosen them. I strongly recommend you to do it on both sides of the of the vehicle, right on the left and on the right simultaneously. Uh, our next step is going to be taking the the wheel of the left side of the vehicle and taking the router off. The left side of the vehicle is also jacked up and secured, as you can see. So I've got the rear of the vehicle standing on uh, uh, on the secure stands. Uh, on the router, you will be able to see the little rubber plugs on both sides. You can see the hole here and here. That's how these rubber plugs look like. Uh, these rubber plugs. Uh, uh, inserted inside of these holes and the purpose of that is to be able to adjust it without taking the brake pads and calipers uh, off the router so by taking the wheel but it represents uh, little difficulties you have to find the cog 
with your flat bit screwdriver through this hole and obviously adjust it accordingly. Before I start doing the fine adjustments, obviously I would like to do the rife adjustments. For that purpose, uh, I take the routers off. Right, uh, so we'll, we'll do it on the, on the left side as well. And let's put it on the soft surface so it's not damaged. Uh, prepare the brake cleaner once you once so uh, once you take it off. Obviously, I recommend you to apply a little bit of brake cleaner to the brake pad shoes on both sides and uh, clean uh, wipe it off with the uh, clean rug. Now, um, the general general idea of uh, or general guideline to adjust the rear brake pad shoes is that your handbrake will make four to five clicks in the in this position and right, the car has to be secured if it takes more than that that means your rear brake pad shoes loose and they have to be tightened or if it takes only one to two clicks it's too tight and you will definitely hear the noise coming from the vehicle because the brake pad shoes will be touching the router from inside and it'll create additional wear and tear on your routers from inside now we will start doing the rough adjustments on the, on, on the cog, so you can see the cog is here as well. It's slightly displaced, uh, displaced to, the, to the left. So don't forget, on the left side, the, on the left side brake pad uh, uh, adjustment is slightly displaced to the left. On the right side, it's slightly displaced to the right. That would be useful for you if you'll, uh, if you'll decide to do the adjustments while you've got the router on using these holes I just mentioned before. Now, we'll do the rough adjustments now. And the other guideline to adjust it is uh, obviously the router of the rear wheel has just catch a little bit uh, the internal surface of the router once it's adjusted properly. It, it's not supposed to prevent it uh, from moving. Um, now, once we do the rough adjustments, I'll show you the next step. I just uh, did uh, a little bit of uh, rough adjustment. In order to check uh, how good it is, uh, I have to apply the handbrake. And uh, what we'll do, uh, let me walk towards the handbrake and uh, apply the handbrake. So as you could hear, that did about uh, five to six clicks. That's okay. Now in this position, we'll try to rotate the router off uh, right side, and you can see it's quite quite hard to move it sideways, All right, forward or backward. So that means uh, the brake is uh, um, um, handbrake is uh, applied properly, and straight away. We check the left side. Now, uh, left side is also tight. And to my view, right, uh, uh, there is no movement on the left side at all. Now, obviously, the pressure has to be applied equally on both sides. So, what uh, we're going to be doing now is a fine adjustment. And uh, for, that, uh, for that purpose, we will be using the holes. We remove the rubber plug from, from these holes, if you remember and uh, we'll use a flat bit screwdriver to do the fine adjustment on the cog. All right, boys, so now we're going to do the fine adjustment. Uh, for that purpose, uh, I use a special procedure. It's a bit uh, time consuming, but nevertheless, uh, it gives me a better accuracy in adjustment. What I've done, obviously, once we've done the rough adjustment, um, you put your handbrake on uh, uh, six clicks or seven clicks, whatever you're going to start from and uh, try to spin the routers. If one of them spins, that means it's loose. Now, uh, you, can, you can go other way. You can tighten or loose the other one, um, but I prefer to go the other way around, tighten them. Once uh, you tighten it, obviously, uh, you go back to the handbrake and count the clicks. Now, once uh, both uh, Router is impossible to rotate at five clicks. Uh, it uh, becomes uh, uh, better. Uh, after that, uh, uh, re uh, take the handbrake off and uh, count four clicks and see which one is gonna uh, be loose after that. In my situation, at four clicks, the right side router it's quite steady, right, uh, and uh, it's impossible to rotate it. But 
the right side as you can see I still can rotate it by my hands see I'm rotating it now that means uh, my uh, right side needs a little fine adjustment to make it a little bit tighter just a little bit for that purpose uh, align the, the hole and uh, use your screwdriver to tighten it to tighten the cogwheel now the rule uh, which I recommend you to write down and remember that on the left side moving cogwheel up will loosen it moving cogwheel down will tighten it on the right side moving cogwheel up will tighten it and moving cogwheel down will loosen it so obviously at four clicks on my hand brakes I have to I have to tighten it a little bit because it rotates as you can see now uh, don't rush just do it uh, slowly take your time at the end of the day brakes is uh, one of the most important uh, parts of the vehicle and you cannot jeopardize your safety I'm gonna do my four clicks one two three four and that's what we're trying to achieve four to five clicks that's the general rule of thumb and I will try to rotate uh, both routers now uh. Well, this one is tight, and let's check the right side, that one is tight as well. So, gives me indication that uh, both, wheel, both wheels are locked by the handbrake, and uh, that will secure my vehicle on any slope. Now, in order to check if it's not too tight, we can take the handbrake off, and now see how easy it is to rotate the, the routers. This is quite easy, and you can hear it's slightly, slightly, slightly touching the brake pad shoe. So quite easy to rotate. And it's, uh, same uh, we have to do on the other side. Yeah, quite easy to rotate. We can hear the brake pad shoes uh, touching, touching the router, and we'll start assembling the calipers brakes and the wheels uh, one of the useful hints which uh, I would like to give you uh, if you also intend to replace your fuel filter that would be probably one of the best times to do that uh, wheel is off uh, and uh, you can see that uh, this is this is our fuel filter All right, uh, and uh, uh, if you intend to do that procedure to adjust your handbrake uh, probably would be a good idea to do it when you've got empty tank in that scenario uh, When you will disconnect the fuel filter uh, with empty tank uh, You will not have a uh, leak or better to say minimal leak obviously you have to use the tray and you've got perfect access to the um, Fuel filter and you can replace it uh, at the same time um, once uh, once you've done it, obviously you can put the wheel back on. My caliper is on, obviously. And um, once uh, uh, I install the wheels, uh, we'll do the test drive. Boys, forgot to mention to you before you put the uh, wheel on, make sure that the rubber plugs for the handbrake adjustment when uh, uh, without taking the router off. Uh, these plugs, rubber plugs, have to be obviously placed in on both sides. Don't forget that. <laughs> 